Welcome back here to Up North at Four. Joining me now, a very special guest, Tom Berg, joining me at the desk. And Tom, we've corresponded over email many times yes, over the past uh, several months. And I didn't know this until quite recently. You have quite the long history, quite the story. You are a former FBI agent. You're now a writer, even though you said you don't consider yourself <laughs> to be a writer, but you're officially a writer now because you have several books published under your belt. Thank you so much for joining us. And I, I almost don't even know where to start with you, but I feel like we just got to talk about the books that you have written in the past few years, including one that just recently came out. So tell us a little bit about how you got started writing and kind of what that has led you to at this point. Well, I'm a lifelong railroad buff, uh, a very serious interest in a small railroad out in Idaho. Um, as I, uh, in, during my career, my life, I uh, researched the history of that r railroad. And mm -hmm. at some point, uh, through friends that I had made, they said, you have to write the history because nobody else knows this. Again. Yeah, this is, uh, this is right up your alley. So when I retired in 1999, I focused on that. That was job one of retirement. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and uh, wrote a very nice, uh, I'm very proud of the book, White Pine Route is the name of it. It came out in 2003. Uh, published by the Museum of North Idaho. I think anytime you find a museum as a publisher, it uh, gives you credibility. Mm -hmm. And I thought that was the end of it. And Little then, did you know. Yes. Well, I learned a lot of, I go with what I learned along the way. Mm -hmm. And I learned a lot about writing. I learned a lot about publishing. Um, I had access to a huge steam locomotive photo collection that belonged to a friend. And uh, it was his grandfather's collection. And when I came up with an idea of how to use it in publications, he loved the idea. So we went forward from there, I did a series of publications for the Milwaukee Road Historical Association. Mm -hmm. uh, then there were all kinds of other railroads involved. So probably I had, uh, by the time all of that peaked and was done uh, in the 20s of books with my name on the front, oh, wow. uh, railroad publications. And again, I thought that would be the end of it. <laughs> um, I'm active in the Mural Historical Society mm -hmm. Uh, help with some small research booklets uh, that we sell there at mm -hmm. the museum and some of those. And then uh, along came my friends convincing me that some of my stories probably needed to be down on paper somewhere in fiction. Okay. So uh, over the last year or two, uh, I've tried my hand at fiction. Mm -hmm. uh, mm -hmm. I've always said I'm not a real writer. Just because I'm an author doesn't mean I'm a real creative writer. <laughs> But now I'm having, I'm admitting to myself that I am a, a writer. Yeah, I mean, you're published, so at this point, right, you, you can't deny it any longer, Tom. Right? Well, I've been around publishing, <laughs> of course, and, but yes, I, I, I'll go with that. Okay, <laughs> we'll roll with it, sure. Uh, I'm, you said your friends, though, were the ones that finally sort of convinced you to start uh, give fiction writing a chance. Did that take a lot of convincing on your end, or was it just, I, I've got a lot of stories, and hey, maybe this is some worth giving a, a try here. Well, I, yeah, I do have a lot of stories, and I've always not, you know, I didn't uh, wake up in the morning I'm gonna, thinking I'm going to tell all my stories, uh -huh. but something will trigger one, and I'll do it. You know, maybe we'll have our group of railroad friends having coffee, and something will come up, and I will tell a story. Mm -hmm. And so over, the, over time, that developed into, well, maybe you should write this down. And then when I finally, even when I finally started, I didn't really have the right vehicle to do it but uh, as I learned more about writing, I, I put it together, and, and so I'm, I'm, I'm pretty proud of Accidental Sheriff. Yeah, I was, so I was going to say, so your first fiction book, or uh, I guess technically fiction book. Oh, it is fiction. Accidental Sheriff, but it's partially based off of some of your real-life events that you were a part of uh, as an FBI agent. So was it difficult to write this and kind of use your past experiences, or did it just kind of come naturally to you? Well, actually, that's what made it easy, it was, it was realizing that I could fictionalize some of the real plots mm -hmm. that happen in real life. I, uh, I love to watch uh, movies or uh, TV shows uh, and read uh, crime fiction, but they all become too fictional. Yeah, And right, so right. my purpose in writing, I guess, in part, is to write reality, how it really works sometimes. Mm -hmm. So um, change some names, change some settings, uh, twist some stories a little bit, combine some stories, 
Um, and it started to work, and it continues to work. Kind of just wrote itself from there, right? You can, if you become a writer, you kind of can lose yourself in writing. And, right, and that's right. that's occasionally happening to me. I can imagine. So we're going to take a quick break, though. We've got so much more that I want to talk about. That's but fine. We're going to take a quick break. We'll be right back here on Up North at 4. Welcome back to Up North at 4. Tom Berg joining me, retired FBI agent turned writer, and you had mentioned you never thought this would ever be your second career, right? Becoming a, an author. And now we have just recently released your second fiction book, which is the sequel to your first, right? So very special deputy. It's the direct sequel to your first one, Accidental Sheriff. And you had mentioned to me before that when you were writing the first book, at a certain point you're like, wait a minute, I can probably make this two separate books. When did that moment kind of... Uh, the light bulb go off in your head for that? Well, I was actually about a book and a half done, <laughs> and I realized that the right stopping point would be when the uh, sheriff, who was uh, appointed to fill out the term mm -hmm. of a uh, murdered sheriff, mm -hmm. uh, when his term ended, that would be a better stopping point. And uh, then the new sheriff, one of his first uh, acts was to swear in the old accidental sheriff, uh -huh. as uh, a very special deputy to help him to mentor his department, mm -hmm. to assist them in major investigations with my background knowledge, the, my, with the sheriff's background knowledge. Mm -hmm. uh, sometimes things come from, you, you write what you know, and sometimes exactly. things come from reality. Yeah, so you had mentioned in the first book, Accidental Sheriff, the, uh, the main character is a retired uh, FBI agent and then tried to just live a quiet life, got dragged back into it. Some basis in reality there, Tom? Are you still working some beats? What's going on? Uh, no, there, <laughs> that is not a basis in reality. Um, I've created the fictional characters, uh, uh, Sheriff Thomas T. Thomas. I wonder who he's named after. Uh, and the location is Coda, being some kind of a musical term for the end of the line up on okay, Lake Superior. Uh, the fictional Gitchigumi County, mm -hmm. uh, of which he becomes sheriff. And so, no, I uh, the only... Uh, real life law enforcement I'm involved in at all is that f since I retired in 1999, I've been on the board of Crime Stoppers of Lincoln County. Okay. Um, but otherwise not. I'm certainly still friends with people in law mm -hmm. enforcement. Uh, over that 23 years of retirement, uh, most of my real colleagues that I worked with over those years have retired. Mm -hmm. There are a few still active at the very top of their level of their department, people mm -hmm. like the uh, Vilas County Sheriff, Lincoln County Sheriff, Marathon County Sheriff. Uh, most others have retired by now. Yeah, right, right. right. And so you had mentioned it before, too, when you were working in the FBI. You did a lot of work up in our neck of woods, the North Woods here in Rhinelander. I, before you had even mentioned that to me, I'd, I, I mean, I never knew we even had a, a department here in central Wisconsin. So this was news to me, and I'm sure whenever you tell people that, that's news to them as well. Is that kind of a safe assumption? It, it, it is. Uh, you know, the Wausau office of the FBI uh, going to my time, which was 1977 to 99 mm -hmm. in the Wausau office, uh, consisted of two agents uh, working a nine-county area about the size of the state of Vermont. Uh, we had all of the FBI's responsibilities. We're called resident agents because we live in live the territory, worked, are part yeah. of the community. Um, and my personal territory throughout that time uh, of originating cases was generally from Wausau to the north, which involved roughly the same as your viewing area. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, Lincoln, Oneida, Vilas, Price, uh, Iron Counties. Um, people always say, uh, why is there an FBI here? There's no crime in Wisconsin. And my answer is we're doing a pretty good job. I was going to say, I guess, I guess that's, what, uh, that's the point of it, right? Uh, so we never we, know what's going on. We were actually very busy. Mm -hmm. um, we often generated uh, much of our own work from our liaison contacts, either with the local law enforcement agencies, our community contacts, uh, professional people like bankers and all mm -hmm. that sort of thing. Um, we had a lot of work to do, and I think we did it very well. I, I, I would say so as well. And so, Tom, obviously a lot of your stories, a lot of your former careers kind of influencing your work now, including your newest book, Very Special Deputy, which is out now. And, of course, I'm sure there's people out there watching are like, I got to get my hands on that. Or they're like, I know somebody who would love that Christmas right around the corner, of course. Mm -hmm. Where could they purchase copies of these books? Uh, Yankee Bookstore in Wausau. Mm -hmm. um, Sweeter Times in Merrill, 
-hmm. or uh, MS Designs, which is handling all of the online or mail order sales. Um, you have their identifying of course, of course. We'll, we'll, we'll put that up on the screen for anybody who's hoping to get their hands on a copy of this book. And Tom, uh, I'm going to need to read the first book here before I can even get into the sequel here, but I, I can assure you, that's I your, will be reading that, all right? That's your copy. Perfect. That works for me. All right, Tom, I appreciate you taking the time to join me today. We're going to take a break here in Up North at 4. We'll be right back. <laughs> 